Welcome to a new video. Today we want to take a closer look at the first pictures of the Honda power unit for the 2026 F1 season. It's quite remarkable to see early pictures so early in the season of the new power unit generation. So we can be sure that Honda was hiding all the important parts. But first of all, I want to give you a comparison to the old generation. So this is the Honda power unit, which they presented in 2023, which was already an old uh, power unit at the time. So it's already a couple of years old, but if we flick between the two, you can already see the big differences. First of all, you realize that the battery is a lot bigger now. So the battery, of course, needs to provide three times the power. So we are talking about 350 kilowatt now instead of 120. So the battery pack is massive. The next thing I want you to focus on is the MGUK. Previously, the MGUK was pretty much hidden under the cylinder head and under the exhaust primaries. And we could only see the orange cables here. So on the left hand side of the car, this is um, the high voltage connector for the MGUK. On the right hand side, we have the one from the MGUH in driving direction. And nowadays, the MGUK is massive, which is no surprise because it's also three times as powerful. Interesting here is that you can mount the MGUK um, in the power unit box. You can also mount it next to the battery. So this is up to you. And Honda was deciding to mount it next to the battery. The cool thing now is that you don't have this big bulky part next to the engine, which creates a big massive part and you cannot really have a close bodywork or a tight bodywork. Now it's sitting next to the battery. And by putting these things further forward, you have the advantage that you can have a slimmer bodywork around the engine, which is a first nice idea. And also we can see the MGUK transmission here. If we think about that, most teams don't use the maximum allowed RPM in F1. And let's say the power unit, so the combustion engine is running at around 10,000 RPM. The MGUK is allowed to run at 60,000 RPM instead of 50,000 RPM in the previous generation. So the MGUK can run six times faster than the combustion engine. And that's why we have a gearbox between them. You can see all these little gears here to drive the camshafts and connected on the way, possibly to this gear here, is the transmission of our MGUK. So the transmission ratio can be six in that, um, in that sense. It also makes sense to um, let the MGUK run faster because you can then provide um, more power with less torque. So less things can break and the engine can be lighter. The next thing I want you to focus on are the chassis mounting points. So there are three of them, one, two, three, and three on the other side. So six to the chassis and four to the gearbox. So the transmission mounting points are this one, for example, and the other ones are not visible. Now, if you look at these mounting points and we compare this to the previous engine, we have one, two, three here. Now look at the distance to the cylinder head, for example. So this one is pretty close to the cylinder head, whereas the new one is a lot further away. Now, if we go back to the regulations, we can see the current regulations and these are these mounting points. So we have these three coordinates. So this is zero, 270, 25, that is the lower one. So where 25 is the Z coordinate, so the height. Then we have the middle one, 360, 270, and the upper one, 190 and 440. If we go back to the 2025 regulations, we can see that the coordinates are slightly different. But the point at the cylinder hat is 340, 260, and here it's 360, 270. So it's 20 millimeter further outboard. If we now go back to these pictures and we check between them, you can see the mounting point is here and here it's a lot further away from the cylinder head and this is more than 20 millimeters. So that is an M12 stud connecting the combustion engine to the chassis and this is a lot more than 20 millimeters. So it seems like the engine is more compact. That is the conclusion from that. So, which is quite interesting to see. 
I believe it's an early development engine. A lot of the interesting parts are not on here, but the basic concept will be the same. So we can already see a couple of interesting things here. The next thing we can see at the engine is, this is the intake possibly for the turbocharger in the center. And these are the two inlets for the plenum. So here is the plenum for the right-hand side bank and for the left-hand side bank. This looks like a throttle body on the left on the right. So somewhere from here will be the hoses to connect to the intercooler. Maybe that is a cap for that, but we can't really say for sure. And if we look at the position of the MGUK again, so we can see that it's on the left-hand side of the car. And in the video that Honda provided, we could actually see that the whole battery pack is sitting more on the right of the car and we have the huge MGUK sitting in front of it. So like I said before, this enables you to have a super tight bodywork and that I believe is something we will see on the Aston Martin. And it looks like they already talked to Honda while designing the engine and positioning the MGUK here is a pretty good move. So it allows you to have a super tight bodywork to get more clean air towards the back, produce more downforce at the back. And this is exactly what Adrian Newey always likes to do. So designing everything for maximum aerodynamic effects. And we can also see, for example, the exhaust primaries. So the engine is pretty empty underneath here. And with these exhaust primaries, you always try to have the same length, ideally. So we can see that the cylinder, which is furthest away from the turbocharger, has the shortest way. So it just goes out and straight to the turbocharger. And the other two are trying to match that length. And that's always a problem of Formula One engines. You always have this tight space around the rearward edge of the cylinder head. And this is always where it's limiting your bodywork. But other than that, you can mount the engine pretty low and you have a lot of space underneath. And we could even see this on the other side of the engine. So on the other side of the engine, we can see that Honda was blurring everything that's underneath the exhaust primaries. I mean, this can be there to just distract people. So just to suggest that there is something interesting. If we actually think about what would be sitting there, it could be the oil pump and it could be some cooling connectors. So maybe they didn't want anyone to see that or they just want to confuse people. The next thing is if you provide such a picture, you also want to create a highlight. So everyone will be looking at that. And here it's clearly these two throttle bodies at the top. I mean, it doesn't really give away too many secrets, but it looks interesting and it's quite a characteristic shape. So that's quite interesting to see. I think there's some interesting technical details we could see here and it shows us in which direction Honda will go. So how do you like the new Honda power unit for the 2026 season? Do you think positioning the MG UK in front of the engine is a game changer and allows them to have aerodynamic advantages? Let me know in the comments below and see you next time.